but you're not a medical student anymore. You've graduated from med school, you've passed your exams, and you're about to start your new job as an FY1 doctor. It's an exciting opportunity. You finally made it, and you're going to start your new career as a doctor. So it can be a daunting process to transition from med school to start working as a doctor. In this video, I'll share with you some insights I wish I knew before starting foundation year. Insight number one, you might find that you're nervous when you're going to start your job, especially if you're called to see an acutely unwell patient. Know that you have all the knowledge required and you've passed your exam. So go back to basics when you see a patient who is acutely unwell go from your airway management breathing circulation from a to e so that will help you to assess the patient in a thorough and systematic way so just go back to your basics because you've done this many times and you have the knowledge so it's just going through the systematic process so you don't miss anything. And once you've assessed the patient, then ask for help. It's always good to ask for help. Call your senior, tell them what you've seen, what your assessment findings have been, and what you want the patient to have and what you've done and what you want from your senior. So be thorough in your assessment and get help early. If you've done a proper assessment of the patient with A to E assessment, your senior will appreciate that. A good resource I would recommend is to get the Oxford Handbook of Foundation Program. It has a lot of resources about managing acutely ill patients and some useful tips about starting your job as an F1 and how to make the most of your FY1 jobs. So when you're talking about a patient, to a senior member of the team or another colleague, it's always good to have a structure and organize your thoughts before you talk to that person. Say for example, you're asked to phone one of the other members of a specialty team and to refer a patient. It's always good to gather your thought first and have all the relevant details of a patient at hand. So have a look on the computer system for the latest blood results. Have a look on the, in the notes, make sure that you've read the notes and you know exactly what's the story of the patient and you will use a model that will help you. Some doctors find the S-bar model work for them, so situation, background, assessment and recommendation. So once you have a structure, you will actually be more fluent in discussing patients with other members of the specialty team or your senior. As an FY1 doctor, your senior won't expect you to know a lot of things about the medical specialty. But what they expect you to know is to know your patient very well. You need to know what's the patient coming with, what's been done investigation wise, and what has been the symptoms, and what has been the process since the admission and what have been the results of the patient. So these are the things that as an FY1 doctor, you need to know. You may not know a lot about the medicine, but you need to know your patient very well because your senior will expect that you know your patient. So make sure that uh, you spend time with your patients and have a look in the notes and read the notes and know your patient very well. There will be days when you're very busy and you feel overwhelmed. So a good thing to do when you have a lot of tasks is to make a list of the tasks and then to prioritize the tasks in terms of importance and urgency. This is something that's very important to manage your time because there will be tasks that you may not have time to do. And in these cases, it's important that you prioritize the task and do the one that's most important and most urgent first. It's important that you remember the name of your colleagues, the nurses that you're going to work with because when you need to speak to them, it's always good to address them with the first name. This is something that will help you and you'll find that when you talk to them with referring them to the first name that they'll be more willing to help you. So be sure that you remember their name. As doctors, we're good at caring for others, but when it comes to caring for yourself, we could do better. So it's so important that you make sure that you take your break and you keep yourself well hydrated. Because if you don't look after yourself, how could you look after other patients? It's so important that you make sure you take your break, keep yourself well hydrated and make sure that you don't skip your meals because 
your mood is important when you're working on calls and nights because you need your energy level to be maintained so if you're feeling hungry or if you're dehydrated you won't be productive and you won't be making good decision so it might feel that you feel guilty or you feel that it's so busy you don't have time but actually you need to have this break because it's going to help you to be more productive because what you don't want to do is to just work 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 and then skip your meals skip your break and then at the end of the shift you feel terrible because you just work so much and you've not even had the time to drink some water or eat something and it's just going to make you feel tired and in the long term it's not good for your well-being so make sure you take a break another thing i would say is that you might find that you're having some difficulties or it's a bit challenging it's something that most fy1 doctors will experience and talk to other of your colleagues they may experience the same problem and be willing to share your difficulties and it's always good to seek help and talking about things like that will help you it's just a good thing to talk and to have a shared experience of the fy1 year because it's a tough year you'll have hard days and do have bad days as well so there will be good days but be sure that you have a good support network in the hospital and make sure that you have good support network with your fy1 who can relate to you and when you have any difficulties it's always good to know that there are other people in the same boat and will also experience the same experience and it's good to talk about these things and seek help early if you find that you're struggling there's always help and if you seek help you will get the support so seek help from your educational supervisor from other senior doctors or from the program director if need be so they all help um, make sure that you use this help because what most doctors do is that they suffer in silence and when it comes a bit too late then they will seek help so seeking help early will help avoid something developing and worsening last but not least even if you're busy and have a hectic rotor make time to do activities beyond medicine activities such as going to the gym going to a movie or hobbies that you enjoy doing or meeting friends it's so important that you make time to do things outside of medicine because then you'll feel recharged and when you go back to work you'll feel restored so it's so important that you make sure that you don't neglect that side of your life i hope you find this video useful if you like this video give it a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe if you've not already subscribed and leave a comment in the comment section take care everybody bye bye